guys, we're here with WTF Car Reviews, and today we're going to be reviewing the all-new 2022 Audi RS e-tron GT. And huge thanks to Steven and Ricard here at Audi Tampa for making this review possible. I'll leave a link to your inventory below, and if you're looking for a new premium or performance vehicle in the Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for Ricard. And as you guys see, it's going to rain really hard very shortly, so we're going to have to hurry up this outside portion of this review. But for those of you guys who don't know, the RS e-tron GT or e-tron GT in general has been Audi's battery electric executive car since 2021 rivaling mainly against the Porsche Taycan starting at hundred and four thousand nine hundred dollars for the regular e-tron GT not the RS version still making a ton of power with boost 522 horsepower 469 horsepower without the boost enough to get the car to 60 in 3.9 seconds 236 miles of range 152 mile an hour top speed and with DC fast charging in a public charge port you can expect around 20 22 and a half minutes for a 5 to 80 percent charge of course the dual motor with a 93 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery the rs gt that you see here starts at 143 thousand dollars and we still get the 93 kilowatt hour battery with dual motor quattro all-wheel drive however with boost engage we're making 636 horsepower 590 horsepower without the boost enough to get this 5150 pound ev four door to 16 around three seconds making it a no joke performer 232 miles of range still 22 and a half minutes to charge it up from five to 80 percent in a public dc fast charging the standard rs gt gets carbon fiber accents a carbon fiber roof e-torque vectoring tungsten carbon coated brake disc with orange brake calipers we have a few options here on this specific rs gt starting with a carbon performance package for around 6500 bucks here we get fancier headlights and taillights laser led hd matrix 4 the headlights black badges power steering plus illuminated carbon fiber door sills and rear wheel steering we get the 7100 dollars carbon ceramic brake package too outside of the carbon ceramic brakes of course we also get these really aggressive red brake calipers up front and these specific 21 inch rims with summer performance tires full leather package too for 5350 dollars that includes a dynamic suede headliner full leather for the dash doors and center console we get fully adjustable sports seats which are heated and massage ventilated seats of course too total price at around 164 thousand dollars what do we get for that money let's jump right in so up front as you see these really aggressive led laser matrix headlights full black badging for the front end styling front parking sensing and a 360 camera you see quite a few sensors right up front very aggressive overall design i'm gonna have to rush this exterior portion because as you mentioned it is going to rain and we're gonna we're gonna probably record a couple of videos today in the rain because there's a hurricane coming in tampa so i'm probably gonna have to go somewhere else for the next few days so got to stack up on these videos while we can but wheel and tire setup we had a side sensor functional airflow too which is wrapped in carbon fiber massive brakes and massive wheels these are 21s wrapped in goodyear eagle f1 asymmetric summer performance tires up front dimension are 265 35 r21 massive front brakes too i'll leave a link right here show you exactly how large these rotors are but they're massive carbon ceramics charge port we'll see if it's a push to open it is not i'll show you the latches inside heat extractor on the side full carbon fiber for the mirror cap led turn signal on it the glass fills up uh, most of the frame no blind spot monitoring on the glass i'll show you where exactly the blind spot monitor is i believe it's like right here in the corner smart access for all four and the doors are electrically assisted for the opening function carbon fiber roof too Hopefully you can pick it up on camera. The rear wheel and tire setup, of course, is staggered. We get 305 30R21s and a multiple piston Audi carbon steering brake caliper. That's definitely appreciated. Usually we see single piston uh, sport brake calipers in vehicles in this segment. However, here, still a dual piston out rear. Additional side sensor, which aids your 360. Super aggressive rear LED taillights, RS badge, e-tron GT, black badging, and an auto deployable rear spoiler. Of course, we're not going to start this e-tron GT up because it is fully electric, but we can pop the frunk up and see what we got going on under there as you just saw the door is completely electric so it takes a second for it to actually open so the only way to open up the front is this button right here on the door panel so you press that button and it unlatches we'll take a step right here out front and again those led headlights are absolutely beautiful there is a latch to open up the front unfortunately once we figure out where it is there are hydraulic struts which does assist quite a bit not the most space for the front but you can still throw a couple backpacks back here maybe a carry-on suitcase which will aid with overall cargo space we have our washer fluid up front but again what you see is basically what we get actually the washer fluid is out rear up front i guess that is your 
coolant for the internals, but we can shut this thing right up. Oop, didn't actually shut. Gonna have to put a little bit of weight on it. But anyway, take one more step back and get a good look at the front. Light pattern, functional airflow in both the corners. Beautiful. But the interior, that's where this car really shines outside of the uh, performance, of course. The performance is really why you buy this e-tron gt but the interior is also impressive especially with this full leather package we get dual pane windows full leather for the upper portion of the door panel it's gushy soft and red contrast stitched we have carbon fiber beneath that genuine carbon fiber suede alcantara for the second for the center portion also stitched gushy soft for the armrest auto one touch for all four two person memory seats two speakers on the door on the door panel banging olsen sound system trunk release front release as we mentioned and our child locks fully adjustable mirrors four-way adjustable and power folding down, down below it's some soft touch materials rubberized for the floor area you'll fit a foot long with no issues stepping inside illuminated rs carbon fiber door sill the seats are fully leather heated and ventilated massage seats too perforated and quilted for the center portion. They have adjustable bolsters. You can recline, drop, lift, and slide, and adjustable thigh support, four-way lumbar control too. Taking a step inside though, well, also says RS underneath the headrest, but now taking a step inside, we can really check it out. So first thing we notice is the steering wheel. Unfortunately, when we were in park, uh, the steering wheel doesn't move. So you have to actually put the car into drive for the steering wheel to move. You throw it right back into park and see, it locks right up, can't do nothing. But steering wheel itself isn't the thickest, but the 10 2 bolstering notch is solid. Nine and three fits perfect in your hand. Flat bottom with some notches on the sides. RS, aluminum with some piano black in the center. The Audi area is rubberized. The horn, very aggressive sounding horn. People should definitely be getting out of your way. Aluminum paddle shifter. You can adjust the infotainment cluster on the left side and the right side. You can answer and hang up your phone calls, voice commands, skip your songs, adjust your volume. Uh, the turn signal stocks have a very satisfying click. We get auto headlamps, auto high beams, and auto rain sensing wipers. The infotainment adjustments, you press this view button and adjust between whether or not you wanna prioritize the LCD cluster or the gauges. I personally prefer to prioritize the gauges. Right now we're in comfort mode. The drive mode selector is in the bottom left corner of the buttons. We can see the other drive modes and see if anything changes up. So in dynamic mode, nothing really changes up. We still have a power indicator, individual efficiency and comfort. We'll start the review off in comfort, transition into dynamic and just see what the overall differences are. The infotainment cluster itself includes our notes, true navigation screen, Google Maps as a heads up screen. That's a huge touch range. We have 111 miles of range, consumption, short-term memory, long-term memory and driver's assistance, traffic sign recognition as well. High beam assistant, Audi pre-sense, which is currently limited, sensor view limited due to the surroundings, which is pretty interesting, and our Sirius XM radio. Notes again, and our turn-by-turn -turn GPS, which is probably my, per my personal favorite to look at at all times. 200 mile an hour speedometer, 95 degrees outside, 3.07 p.m. We have our off-road settings, or not off-road, I think that's just the location, because we're currently on top of a parking garage. That rain cloud is really scaring me, guys. I'm gonna have to hurry this review up. Anyway, to the left, we still have our power indicator full. Um, Alcantara for the top of the dashboard, leather stitched throughout the rest of it with some red contrast stitching. Frameless rear view mirror, auto dimming, no garage home link settings on it, unfortunately, and I don't see garage home link settings anywhere in this car. Pretty much the one of the smallest um, little visor mirrors that I've seen, but as long as it does the job, it really can't complain. Carbon fiber all throughout, piano black above that. It says e-tron right above it as well. You see, we're currently looking at our backup camera. That's because these German cars, for some reason, after you reverse and put the car in park, you're stuck looking at your backup camera basically permanently. We're looking, well, not a backup camera. This is actually a forward-facing camera with a 360. You throw it into reverse and Never mind, let's drive. You throw it into reverse, and now we're looking at a backup camera with guidance lines trajectory. And I'm liking the clear, crystal clear resolution of it. 3D, you can access a 3D camera and turn it around, see your e-tron GT at top, on top of this parking garage. You can also adjust between which view you're looking at. So right here, we're looking at the right side of our e-tron. You can see a direct rear view and a left side view. Cool, automatic parking assist to a fully adjustable camera, very, very high resolution. The screen itself, unbelievable response, and it clicks when you touch it. You can see the response of the touchscreen for the map. Excellent, and it's a 3D color display for the Google Maps. Huge thumbs up for Audi. Home screen includes just about everything. We have radio, media, phone, navigation, phone apps, vehicle, favorites, and settings. Vehicle settings include Audi, drive, select, air conditioning, light, visibility, vehicle, data, charging, Park A, driver assistance, seats, settings, and favorites. Drive select includes efficiency, comfort, dynamic, and individual, just like the button that we have down here. We have our music, cool. 
phone and our navigation, which, my, which is my personal favorite to look at at all times. Full carbon fiber trim, as you mentioned, heated and ventilated seats, auto climate control, of course, outlined in aluminum, suede Alcantara with red contrast stitching for the areas that your knee will often hit, drive mode select, traction control you can disable, hazards, parking cameras, automatic parking, and this turns uh, the display on and off. Personally, I prefer having it on, but at night, I can understand why you would want to have it off. The gear selector, it's similar to like Acura. You just push for reverse, pull back for drive, and push this button for park. Engine start stop or battery start stop. We have a little cubby for some keys or whatnot. We can remove all the keys that I currently have. Hopefully we can get a chance to review all these cars that I have here because that rainstorm looks like it may stop us. Touch sensors for the skip and volume controls. Two cup holders with these pushy things to keep your drinks in place. Some piano black surrounding it all. And personally, I usually am not the biggest opponent to piano black. However, here you can see it's really collecting fingerprints quite a bit. These aren't even my fingerprints, but they do collect them quite a bit. We have some suede Alcantara surrounding the piano black. The center console is laughably small. You probably fit two 12 ounce cans in there, which I guess isn't terrible. Additional 12 volt and two USB-C ports back there if you guys can pick them up on camera. The glove box is soft touch on the outside. You can open it up. It's lined with felt and massive. You're fitting 20, 25 license plates, probably just one pair of shoes, but still more than enough space. The interior lights are LED. That's about it though for this front seat. It is a beautiful interior. Let's check out the back seat real quick. See how much space is offered back there. Check out the cargo space and then take this e-tron GT RS out for a drive. So out rear, we still get dual pane windows. I guess when you're paying over 150 grand for an EV, they get dual pane windows even out rear. Leather stitch up top. We get the suede Alcantara for the center portion, aluminum door handle. Down below, Gucci saw for the armrest, two speakers for the Bang & Olsen sound system, auto one touch, out rear two. Down below, we still have some soft touch materials. It's not a rubberized tray. You'll fit a six inch sub with no issues, not a storage pocket, but this functions as a grab handle. The rear seats, we still get the rear red seat belts, quilts, perforated, red contrast stitching, and very solid bolstering even for a rear seat. The padding doesn't quite extend all the way out to the door frame. Legroom wise, I'm a little bit over six feet tall, sitting behind my seat settings, and I still have plenty of space. And I think we just found the window sticker that we couldn't find before. So I guess you guys can pause, take a look at all the features that comes equipped on this 2022 Audi RS e-tron GT. So 160, about 165 after destination. But again, pause, take a look at everything that comes equipped in this car, about 20,350 in total options, plus an extra 600 for this Camorra gray metallic paint color. But again, rear legroom, solid. I'm a little bit over six feet tall. I, I easily have three inches of legroom, plenty of room for my feet. Headroom, I have at least an inch, maybe two. Third zone climate control and heated rear seats. No map pockets in front of the front seats, but really not a big deal. We get a center cubby. You got to jab your hand into it, but there's a button that you pull or a latch that you pull and it just falls right down. Not a lot of padding. So for the arm itself, it's not the most comfortable, but you do get two cup holders and I would expect you to fit up to 20 ounce water bottles because they are pretty large. The interior lights are LED. Cool. Grab handle. Good spot for a, like a coat with this coat hanger. We have two coat hangers. So if you're a working man, you can have two jackets or a suit on your rear door. But that's about it for the back seat, guys. Very spacious. We have an electric door out rear too. It shoots you open. Illuminated carbon fiber nameplate too. It doesn't say RS e-tron, but it's still illuminated with some carbon fiber. Cargo space. Let's check it out. Looks like we're beating the rain so far. Hopefully it doesn't start pouring while we take this car out for a drive. So underneath the Audi badge, you press the button and the tailgate electrically opens up. The hinges are covered so you don't have to worry about crushing your cargo. And we have a surprisingly large cargo space. 12 volt out rear two. We can push this stuff out of the way, check out the secret storage. And we get a little bit, I'd recommend taking this cubby off and have a nice little pocket for some grocery bags so they're not flying around. Additional pockets in the corners. You can throw some grocery bags in there. Spacious, I can't reach the back seats. You can fold the rear seats down 40, 40, 20. And I'd expect you to fit up to a 60 inch seat back here with no issues. You can shut this thing right up simply by pressing the button. Once it closes up, we'll take one more step back, walk around this 2022 Audi RS e-tron, dual motor, one more time, and it's a beautiful car. I think as far as EVs, this is probably my favorite when it comes to styling. Performance-wise, let's take it out for a drive and find out. All right, guys, now we've just about seen everything we need to see with the inside and outside of this all-new 2022 Audi RS e-tron GT. Let's take it out for a drive. And right here, looks like a good spot to try out an acceleration off the line. 
or just in comfort mode. We'll throw it into dynamic at some point, but comfort mode on the gas. Oh my God. Oh. Holy crap, this thing is fast. All you can hear is all the crap flying around in the interior. Wow, this is a monster. We have some serious traffic here on the highway, but good thing we got to use that on-ramp. I hope you can pick it up on camera how hard this thing launching back in this seat. So 637 horsepower, and you can feel every bit of it. The brakes feel excellent too. Of course, the regenerative braking helps tremendously with these EVs. The steering feels good, even in comfort mode. We'll throw it into dynamic and just see what the differences are at some point in this review. But even in comfort mode, the steering feels excellent. The throttle response in comfort mode, it's strong, but it's not overly sensitive. It doesn't feel like you're about to fly through the windshield. Like you can on and off and it's not like obnoxious. Obviously, if you match the throttle, you're gonna smack your entire head right back into the seat. But if you're conscious with it, it's a very smooth experience. And I'm not sure if you can pick it up on camera when the cars are passing by, but the blind spot monitors are actually on the inside of the mirror. It lights up orange. Yeah, nobody's passing us anytime soon, but that is where the indicators are. The ride quality, also fantastic. I was noticing it in the parking lot driving over the speed bumps. You barely feel anything in this RS e-tron GT. The steering feels directly on center, even in comfort mode. All right, guys, taking a step out onto this road, we'll lean into it about a third of the way. Oh gosh, this thing is strong. Hopefully we get a chance to try out an acceleration off the line, taking a step out onto this multiple lane highway. Off the line, dynamic mode, oh my gosh. Ooh. Yeah, this thing can really take off. Good gosh, might have to fix that camera after that one. Woo. And just cruising along at highway speeds. It's very quiet, very quiet. Even on concrete pavement, these paddle shifters, we'll see what they control. Oh, that's just your regenerative braking. Okay, that's pretty cool. So yeah, the more aggressive you press the paddle shifter, the stronger the regenerative force is for the regenerative braking. And the brakes themselves, they work very well. I mean, these are massive, massive carbon ceramics with the six pistons up front and even dual pistons in the rear. They really thought about it, thought it through when it came to attention to detail. Obviously, we're talking about a pretty expensive vehicle here, but you're getting a lot for the money. Ride quality too. You run over these expansion joints, bumps in the road. I noticed it when we were just driving around the parking lot with all the speed bumps. The ride quality here is truly fantastic. And I don't think we mentioned it yet, but we also get a heads up display on this RS e-tron GT. Truly a loaded, loaded vehicle. There's nothing in this car that you could possibly want or need, except for possibly a lower base price. But performance wise, luxury wise, truly excellent. Hopefully we can get a chance to do a couple more acceleration runs. And another thing I noticed is this car actually tells you how long you have left for your red light. I'm not quite sure where it gets that information from, but it does say 102 seconds until this light does turn green. We'll see if that's the case. Hopefully we can turn onto this road. We're making a right turn. Hopefully we can turn on before it turns green and I'll catch back with you in one second. All right, guys, taking a step out onto this road. We should be able to try an acceleration one more time on the gas. Oh yeah. And we got a red light coming up. Should give us another chance to try an acceleration off the line. And I'll catch back with you in one second. Good God, this thing is fast. All right, guys, off the line. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's just ridiculous how fast this thing is. I've never driven a Tesla Model S Plaid. I need to. After driving this, I need to because that thing can do 0 to 60 in like 1.9 seconds. This is just like 3 seconds. And just the thrilling experience you get when you launch on that gas pedal is just absolutely ridiculous. You got the chance to drive a Ford Mach E GT, which is kind of similar. It makes about 480 horsepower, but this is like a whole nother level of performance. The Mach E GT that we reviewed had all season tires. This has sticky summer performance tires. So you're putting that power to the ground off the line and that feeling you get, it's like a, if you've ever been on King the Cop from Six Flags in Jersey, it's very similar. It's like the moment you launch on that gas pedal, you're just stuck in your seat and you're taking off. As far as like luxury, tech, and even performance, this car has it all. Barely on the gas right now, you pick up speed very well. And this car has a two-speed transmission. Unlike a lot of EVs with only single speeds, this uses a two-speed, so you can actually feel the shifts. Okay, these guys are moving too, so it's not just me. 
But overall, if you guys are looking for a luxury vehicle, you don't want to fill it up with gas, you want an EV, but you want a good looking EV because let's be let's be honest, there aren't that many good looking EVs. The BMW i4 M50 that we reviewed in this channel is probably the first decent looking EV that I was able to get my hands on, but let's be real, the RS e-tron GT from Audi, in my opinion, is by far the best looking EV out on the road today. The Tesla Model S is just flat out ugly compared to this. The Mach E GT, it's not better looking. It's a good looking car, but it's not better looking than the RS e-tron GT. So if you're looking for a good looking, high performance, high luxury EV, I would definitely recommend checking out the RS e-tron GT. If I had this kind of money, if I could afford it, this would be number one on my list if I was looking for an EV. Like just cruising on this highway, you hear absolutely nothing in terms of road noise. The ride quality is excellent. You run over the manhole covers, speed bumps, expansion joints, and it just stays so flat, so soft, and composed. And you might be thinking, since it's so soft, so refined, the body roll is probably a little bit higher compared to a lot of other sport vehicles, but that's just not the case. Um, and like a highway pull, it's just so ridiculously fast. I can't even put it into words. The steering feels great too. I wish it was a little bit thicker of a steering wheel. I actually think that's that might be my only complaint in this vehicle so far. Just wishing you had a little bit of a thicker steering wheel. And I guess wishing you had a little bit more of a realistic price tag. But other than that, absolutely no complaints. This thing is such a blast to drive. It is beautiful, it is loaded, and it is luxurious. And I would 100% recommend checking it out and a huge thanks to audi tampa for making this review possible i'll leave a link to your inventory below and if you're looking for a new premium car or performance car or suv in the tampa area i would definitely recommend checking these guys out and huge thanks to all of you for watching i had a great time making this video if you're new to the channel please subscribe if you already subscribed thank you so much you guys know the channel is just not possible without you guys and i really appreciate the constant support but again if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe, leave a like too. It really helps me out the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people. Leave a comment, let me know what you like, let me know what you don't like. Leave a comment, let me know if there's any specific cars, SUVs, or trucks you'd like to see reviewed on this channel, and I'll definitely try getting those videos for you as soon as possible. But other than that, again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope all of you have a great day.